Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. You come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to hit newsletters. You're going to see it right on the top row, the right-hand side. You just hit subscribe. You can get the newsletter for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you can get it for one year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So check it out as you get over there and you subscribe. What you're going to see, folks, is that Steve has a lot of great archives on there. You know, you hear him talk about the TD count. You hear him talk about um, the other, uh, Steve's, uh, the momentum indicator. He has all of that right in his website. Once you get the newsletter, you're going to have all that information and really get to understand it so that you can basically be in and out of markets by yourself. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, probably like yourself, just trying to... Uh avoid the heat if that's possible uh, it, it's been extraordinarily hot down here exactly no it has there's no there's no doubt <laughs> you know, I, and i look forward to my weekend time because it uh, gets me out on the golf course but uh and i've been playing and uh, but i tell you i walk off that golf course i am soaked as can be i bet you, you are know, five pounds less at least uh and and i'm sucking down gatorade and water you know for that three and a half hour period so uh but I, I am looking forward to this weekend. Well, listen, uh, next next fall, okay, when yes. you, so at Bel Air, right? They, yeah. so at Bel Air, folks, they have two Donald Ross courses. Well, they're doing one of them over, right? And so the way I guess it works, so Donald Ross, folks, is a famous golf and architect. Absolutely, yes, yes. So they have these new designs, that company of doing them over. So they're putting eight million bucks in it. So it's gonna be ready in November. So you have to come over and we'll play golf up there. Yeah. You, that, that sounds great. It, that sounds Steve, great. you should see the course. It's insane. I mean, they got hills. That, I mean, it's on. You're, you're looking at it like that's you great. just can't that's believe great. it. It's kind of pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, 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 that's great. I like this week. I'm looking forward to because we've got the British Open. Yes. Uh, championship. So, and what I like about that is because of I, I heard you talking about. Hey, now's the time to go to Europe for sure. Right. Um, and. Uh, uh, but uh, what I like about it is usually, and I'm an early, I'm an early riser, and you know usually in the gym by six in the morning or so, and uh, uh, but so what's nice is, is typically you can watch the. I wake up early, yeah. so I could turn the TV on like six or seven in the morning, you know, and watch the uh, watch the British Open. Right in, yeah. nice. Yeah. So hey, I, let's talk a little bit about the market. Yes. It's right now, as I take a look at them, the markets have generated several real mixed messages. So for example. If we take a look at the weekly charts for the Dow, the S&P, and the NDX 100, so these are the weekly charts, they mentioned one of the indicators uh, that I use to identify a bottom. This is the Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal, and it's uh, it's this uh, little black line that is drawn there. Now, I, I don't draw that. I've got this automated on the system. works for all time frames. And uh, and then the way that that pattern gets, uh, and that's a pattern that is tells us the market is stretched. So the market was stretched on a weekly time frame, um, and this, this tool identifies that. And the way that you get a confirmation of a bottom is we just get a bullish reversal candle and each of those formed bull sash candles that confirm that uh, pattern and so that tells us that we've got a bottom on the weekly time frame chart on an intermediate and these patterns on a weekly time frame Tom they just don't form that often however one of the other tools that I use are the TAS market profiles and if we take and this is for the S&P 500 this covers four time frames weekly in the left daily 240 in the 60 minute out there and we take a look we were just talking about the weekly time frame chart it's still in pretty significant bearish territory and what I mean by that, folks, is the way that the market profiles work is they help us to identify where buyers are, where sellers are. And if price can overcome sellers, that would be above the top of a profile, and that would be bullish. Well, in order to have the uh, this indicator on the weekly chart in the red zone tells us there's more more instruments trading below the bottom or the support level of those profiles. So that says that this is going to be a rocky road. Not that it, not this is, and, and if we take a look at these other time frames out here, the 60 minute wasn't a bearish crossover. The daily isn't a bullish crossover out there. So in, in the way that a market would be truly bearish or truly bullish is all these dials would be in the same setting position. They'd either be in the red position or the green or blue position out there. And so we've got a mixed bag here. If we take a look at the weekly market breadth, uh, for the NDX 100, we have the same kind of signal out here. You've got the weekly and the 60 minute that are in the red zone. 
and the daily and the 240 are in the green zone out here, So, which is bullish. So we really have a significant um, set of messages that are pointing to something. We'll yeah. get to that something. <laughs> okay? So if I look at I talked about the, the weekly time frames and how those had formed bottom patterns. If we look at the daily contracts, here's the equity futures. So you got the ES, the NQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000. I have each of those confirming by the D point patterns. They're the larger by the D point patterns out there. And on this chart here, you can clearly see the blue lines represent the TAS market profiles. So if we take a look at the ES mini, it is trading above the top of its profile. So it's basically on a daily basis in a bullish breakout type mode out here. But if we look at the other there's three and you know now just one index is not going to be able to pull the others although the nasdaq is pretty strong but if we take a look at the nasdaq over on the right hand side where price found resistance was at the bottom of its profile now folks when price closes below support oftentimes that can become resistance and last week on Friday, that is exactly what happened. It got up to the 12,197 level and gave it up. If price can close above 12,197, we're talking about the NQ here, well, then we'd likely see a move up to 12,517 or 12,837. But the ES Mini is the only one that is trading above resistance, which right now is uh, support. So the mixed messages, they sort of make sense and point to really what is just simply a choppy market out here. And this choppy market, Tom, is likely to continue until October. So how do I come up with October? This is the 72-year 72 72-year 72 chart for the S&P 500. And what I've selected here, this is a, 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 a uh, provided to me by the folks at Seasonex, and it's a very cool tool because what this allows me to do is allows me to take out uh, and, and see how has a market traded during a midterm election year versus just uh, generally speaking. And here what we can see, this red line represents where we're at. So if we take a look at this, this is the S&P 500 chart for a 72 year period. It really kind of shows a choppy period and a choppy period until we get into the early part of October and then the market should take off to the upside. If we look at the 36-year chart for the NDX 100, it tells us a different picture. This sort of tells us that we're going to rally the rest of this week, and then we start to move lower out there, you know, in kind of a significant way, at least until the early part of August. And if we take a look at the 125-year midterm election chart for the Dow, this too is saying we should top uh, late next week. And then more chop. And then finally, in the uh, late August time frame is when we get a swoosh to the downside. So what in bear markets and all that makes sense. You and I talked about this before. Yes, it here's does. the 2000. Here's the yeah. 2007 bear market. And I want folks to look at these black arrows. This is a weekly chart. And the typical counter trend move is a two week rally, two to three week rally. Well, last week was week number one. And so this suggests that we should see a move higher this week. You talked about the volume today. And so we should see a higher close this week over last week's close. And then it might be curtains. But expect a choppy market through October. I'm going to love it. And listen, folks, okay, come over to our website at TFNN. We're in the newsletters. You hit newsletters. Master and Probabilities on the right-hand side. Hit that baby. Hit subscribe. Uh, yes, yeah, Steve, I see exactly. I mean, I, I think. I think we're going to run for two weeks. And I, I know, yeah. you know, bottom yeah. line. That, that late August, I like that number. I like that Perfect. number. Cooking, man. Have a great Take one. Care, Have a Doug. safe one. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.